I have a new case, new fly case, so perform with it. So it's time to deconstruct a live performance setup. How can you set yourself up to be efficient and perhaps get promoters to really notice you? This video is going to be about how do I set up and make some music along the way too. So let's check it out. Hey y'all, welcome. My name is Daniel Kitchen and thank you for checking out yet another video. Now, if this is your first time here, do not hesitate to click subscribe and hit that notification bell. Whenever I upload a new video, you'll be kept in the loop and, and you'll not miss out on anything. Stick around until the end of this video. I'll tell you all about who the new patrons are. I'll tell you about Discord. I'll tell you about the Kitchen Club and I'll tell you about the Mixer project. That's so much new, so stay tuned for that. So if you're thinking, I want to get this show on the road, I'm contemplating to play Dollars. I've not performed Dollars, but yo, I'm a musician and I bought my first synths or whatever, it doesn't really matter um, as long as you keep in mind that the thing to do is to keep it simple for yourself. Don't do what I did. Buy too many boxes and expect that you will master them overnight, for one, and two, uh, think that you can change your whole setup two weeks before a show and still have a convincing performance. That also doesn't work out. I found out the hard way. There is a rush involved. Um, but there's a few questions you need to ask yourself. One, what kind of artist am I? Two, what kind of sound would I like to make? Three, who is actually my audience? Who am I playing for? Because a lot of people just come up to me and say like, yeah, I want to perform more. Do you know how to perform? And when I ask them, what is your specific sound? What is the sound that you would like to um, get a little bit like known for? They can't tell me, they just don't know. And it's very important because buying new synthesizers and sticking them in a fly case is cool, but you have to understand that this thing acts as a guitar. It acts as an instrument that you need to master. You need to understand where everything is, and the performance looks best if you don't have to constantly look at the knobs while wielding them. The thing is to actually, yeah, you know, get muscle memory going and just like flow, get your performance to flow because if you don't take that, that nerding around standing there too seriously, the crowd is definitely going to pick up on that and then you get that, um, it's a cliche, but then you get that universal language on the dance floor, people will latch on to your sound. But promoters are a different breed. They are checking out what they think their concept needs, but they also think on what is the sound going to be like next year. So. Most producers that I know, they'll just check out the charts and they'll just make something. Now, I'll let you in on a little secret. Anything you probably hear on Beatport, if it's a clued on producer, he's made that last year. It's something that has been lying on the shelf for a long time. Labels are waiting for the correct time to release it. So the new track that you bought, that you thought you're going to inspire yourself on, is a year old. And a year old meaning, you are not getting the most valid information. So it's also a narrative of, are you somebody that is on stage or are you somebody that's on the dance floor? There's a lot of people that are on the dance floor and they think to migrate on stage. There are two different people. If you're in the backstage, it would mean you network with other acts. This is how you get your music. This is how you get to hear what is happening. So if you go to an event, even if you don't, if you're even not ready as an artist yet, if your set is still not finished, it's cool to already orientate yourself like, okay, who is playing? Is this somebody that's close to the sound that I want to make? And ask questions. I've never in my life come across an artist that didn't want to talk proudly about their achievements or their music or their uh, journey. If you just act normal and don't be a Klingon and just talk to these guys and girls, they'll just probably just help you out. As we all know how hard it was to start. So if you come up and say like, dude, I really don't know, how do I work my bass drum? How do I do this? Or how did you get from A to B? I'm glad to help. And most people are. So this is a very important thing. But if you're just like being fanboy, fangirl on the dance floor and all of a sudden just be uh, annoying, that's, you know, it happens. And it's a rookie mistake sometimes but that's basically not what it's all about if you want to make it in this business. If this is something that you want to 
um, uh, you want to uh, turn into a, a day job and you want to just like make money off it, you have to understand what this worth is that you need to figure out. Like another thing is when you make, um, and you perform for your friends. Unfortunately, friends think like, you're my mate, so I don't have to pay you anything. So again, they'll just want you to hold that five to $10,000 uh, um, uh, euro, whatever, fly case, which is worth, well, they want you to perform for free almost, you know? They also want you to bring drinks because you're a mate. So it pays off to actually have um, somebody that can be the barrier. It doesn't need to be the manager per se or whatever, but it be, it'll be cool to make it very clear what the value is of the stuff that you're doing and ask questions. So I had an instance of a very famous artist actually saying, I don't want to be a warm-up DJ. I said, okay, I understand. Where do you see yourself in the night then? Then there were like question marks all over the place because just saying what it is that you don't want and not actually stating where you think you see yourself along the line is a different way of also doing business. Promoters and bookings agents, they don't like it, you know? If you don't have anything to show for yet, it's hard to just like make demands. So, on the promise, over deliver. Another thing is the last thing I'm going to tell you before we're gonna get into the music side of things, is I had a lot of criticism by people saying, why are you standing by yourself in a warehouse, blah, 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 you need to have dancing people in front of you. And then I said, I am trying to get gigs in a certain area. I know promoters have their own concept in mind and they would just like to see if they can fit me in there. If I'm going to place all these distractions in front of the stage just because it looks good, I might as well just stand there with a fly case, do what I do best and they'll think, okay, this is what I see on my performance. This is how I see this within my, um, uh, uh, yeah, within the gig that I have, within the, the, the party that I'm throwing or the event or the festival or whatever. And the last thing is the most important thing. Patience. You'll get there, but don't expect to just like run out of the saloon uh, shooting and thinking that everything is going to happen overnight because it just doesn't. It takes time as anything does. It's like a good wine, you know? The longer you leave it there, the better it's going to taste eventually. Now, are you ready to get into the music side of things? I know I am, yeah? So I'm gonna go over to what's in the case, how I set it up, why the pieces of equipment are there, um, and let's see if we can make some music along the way as well. You ready? Let's go. All right, welcome to the setup. Now, this, uh, if you tag along, um, I think it's one of the smartest setups that I've come up with now in terms of what I want to do. The thing is you want to pack a small setup. Well, it, I think it's not small, it's reasonably sized, but still is manageable, right? There's a few things that I've done. The brain of the operation is the Akai MPC Live. We will get into it, what ha was happening right here. Um, let's start with this. Here, I've got the four different segments lined up for one track. So this is track 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. Now keep this line, 1.3, 2.3, 3.3, 4.3. Those are all my breakdowns. So I know this is where the drop is. Then again, a drop is only a drop if the drums are not playing. So I need to mute my drums when I get to this point. Now, four is some sort of a reprise, some sort of a, a different angle. I can do certain things musically. This is why I use the MPC. Uh, I'm in the next sequence page, as you can see. So uh, obviously getting out of there, there's a kick also playing right here, but I've not mapped it out. So the drums are coming from the octa track, but we will get to that in a second as well. Now. What I want is my track to be broken up in certain segments so that I can easily uh, um, get to everything that I need to get to without thinking too much. On the Akai, I've got a few things mapped out. There's drums also coming. There's a drum roll coming from uh, channel 7 that doesn't play on this uh, sequence, but it does. And then there's this hypnotizing sound that you hear in the background constantly, which I've got delay on and a filter. And in terms of the routing on the mixer, you can see all the flat cables. I've used flat cables so that I can set everything very closely together. We'll get to what's happening right here in a second. 
Okay, so this is how I set this up. We will get to this. The drums are coming from the Octatrack. So the Octatrack gets a clock from the Akai and the black box gets a clock from the uh, Octatrack. Uh, this thing is a loop player. It just fires off ear candy stuff in the background. So in terms of ABC, uh, the way I use my ABC structure, calm down yourself. In terms of uh, the ABC structure that you always see, this is the A category. This is my Octatrack. So if everything breaks down and it's still dance music and I need you to dance to it, this would be the thing that I can work with. I've got always one uh, track for music here as well, as this plays samples, but it also plays MIDI. I'm using it mainly for MIDI for the synth that I've got embedded right here. There's one synth here that is a poly synth or at least, at least a four voice one. I'm using some sound samples from the Akai MPC Live and the Minitar is my bass player. So this is an electronic orchestra, this is my band. Those are my band members. Now, stairs effects over on this side as well that I didn't root directly into any machine, no, on the desk itself here. As you can see, all the um, uh, EQ is straight. I don't want to mix anything on here. I need to make sure that the levels are correct here. That's how I'm setting it up. There's a mono send going into the uh, digital delay DD7 here. The digital de de delay goes into the black sky here, and the black sky goes onto two separate uh, outputs. And there's this one microphone input, as you can see. However, I'm not using it for a microphone. This is my kick drum coming from a separate output of the Octatrack. We can still follow along. So there's three channels coming out of the Octatrack. A stereo, which sits here. There is a stereo coming from the Akai, which sits here. So the two green faders are my stereos. So it's easy. And then the kick drum sits all the way over on this side on the red fader. So for me, being stupid in a club, it means Boom, two green faders and one uh, red fader down would only mean that there's one red fader up and my effects, this is the mini tower by the way, with a diode clipper cable that goes here and for sake of the video I have made it into this case so that I can easily point at the red nipple which is here. That's the diode clipper, it's a small diode in here so the more I crank the Octatrax volume or the filter, the more this will have a gritty kind of feel. Then there's a TP-Link USB hub right here that uh, connects the USB MIDI for the Minitar, for the Tetra, but there's also extra cables if, for instance, I wanted to use the um, subsequent 37, which is sitting here. Let's turn it on, even though it's only there for cosmetic duties today. So, this, the Launch Control XL, obviously, is my MIDI controller mapped out here. Now, if I'm going to build this track up, say, this is the first track that I'm doing, I'm thinking, I want the crowd to really latch on to everything in steps. I need to build it up in steps. The steps are simple. From the left to the right, from the left to the right, from the left to the right, from the left to the right. Everything increases in um, complexity, right? So the more everything is closed off or whatever, the kick sitting on one, it's channel one here where my kick is as well. So it's easy to work your way up to a groove. Now, this thing is how you start your groove. For me, put a little bit of delay on there. Okay, I will look at the measure and see that, boom, it's starting to three, four, and starting again, boom. Does this align with the octa track? We'll go out and go to a track where it plays four bars, four beats. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that's all cool. So, this thing is a hypnotizing thing that acts as a lead now. Once I enter the music in, it will be embedded. There's those frequencies, I set the filter in such a way that it just falls away in the back of the music. But when you need to hear it, it's there. So, I've got the filter right here. You see a few green lights here. That's another effects that I've done on different sounds so that I can easily find them in the dark but I didn't go too crazy on the mapping let's um, let's focus on that so we're moving on my kick is playing because it's on number one which means that if I open this fader up it will give me a punchy kick um, and the light might blink a little bit because on this desk I think it's cool to have a little bit of grit I don't want to overdrive it but hailing from the old school Gabba days I know what it is to 
really kick a mixer in the butt and it's nice if it gives a little bit of an analog feel. Those preamps are pretty cool, so you can see, bam, bam. Blinking, great. Illuminated, bad. So you would like to keep it like this. This kick does everything it needs to do. You can now instantly hear, okay, we can dance to this already. So every sequence that I'm using or every sample that I'm using has to already has have something embedded on which to which you can dance, right? Okay, now the octave track is already playing. There's a, a two way that I can mute my drums. Either I will go in and go like this, everything on or everything off. Since the stereo is out, the two green faders are stereo faders, by the way, the rest of them are mono. Uh, the DN12 Midas mixer has got eight mono channels and 9, 10 stereo, 11, 12 stereo, so that's easy. So as a DJ, you can flick those faders down if you would want to. So out, and now we're going to put the rest of the drums in. So they're playing already. One, two, one, two, three, and cool. I've already got certain things that I'm thinking like, okay, that's cool. That sounds all right. Um, let's turn this down and focus on the drums a little bit. So you can hear kick, closed, snare with a roll. Nice delay here. So nothing on four. Oh yeah, listen to this. Once I engage that delay here, it's going to take out low end on the kick because you don't want to have too much uh, going on once you just make a breakdown. And it's better to make an impact and go back in like so. Hi on six. And pattern one, uh, or bank A, I should say, uh, corresponds with my track here, with the one. So if I'm going to go to bank 2.1, which we're going to do in a second, it would mean that those drums are going to correspond with the next track. Now that might sound complicated and I had a trick where if I switch the sequence here, this would also switch, but that's not so live in my opinion. So what I've done now is I'm going to switch to another track, which means not, uh, more music is going to start playing, but in a different key. I'll take out the drums first and build a break so I have to make a breakdown or a transition uh, physically to make that work now obviously this is just drums let's see what else I've got I got drums from the MPC coming as well and those drums play this and a bass line also so this is the rest of the track so you can see as a jigsaw puzzle it fits into um, the whole mold right so and then I can easily mix it so Simple, see? Back in. Cool, so that's how I set this up. So it's easy, and that means I don't have to think about it. So this is a nice groove. Now, what does the rest do? I've got the Tetra here playing leads, sometimes playing pads, sometimes, and this is my, um, yeah, my ear candy kind of stuff. So let's open it up, you'll hear it. Hear the rise go, two, three, the crash and a riser. So this just keeps revolving because at some point it's just there to tell you this is what's happening. And I've got a few loops here as well. So if I wanted to say like loop in, I got this. So there's loops playing also. If I wanted to use a Add a little bit of uh, adrenaline to the uh, into the mix. That's how I can do it. It's cool. And if I don't need them, I'll just turn them off and just go for the drums that I have. Turn them off. So you can hear. So I can make it fuller or a little bit more empty. Now, I've got my. So that's already my my basis to get some sort of foundation going. Classic progressive house baseline. Boom, 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 boom. Everybody can dance to this, right? Whoa, I think my uh, ear candy goes a little bit too high. 
but it's easy to mix because now the mixing is done on the levels. There's no uh, EQing or whatever. Okay, let's move on to the next segment. So, got the next one. This filter is connected to outputs three and four of the Akai MPC Live. There's six outputs here. I'm using four at the minute. So two are the stereo, one and two. Three and four are going to the acid box three because I don't want to map out the filter constantly. I did it here. But the Akai MPC is notorious for getting crazy if you act, if you give it too much to do. So if, if this, um, uh, if the software needs to think a lot and there's reverb and there's delay and there's also sequencing, I've seen that the Akai, at some point it gets a little bit, you know, sluggish. So I don't want to do it. Besides, Erica Sins, I have to just really just drop the name. Erica Sins have done an absolutely amazing recreation of that Polyvox filter. Polyvox is an old um, uh, synthesizer out of Russia or out of, out of their uh, area. Um, and they have recreated the filter here. So it's a stereo filter. It's not MIDI mappable, uh, unfortunately, so it doesn't get uh, MIDI uh, in here, but it's truly analog, which is what I like. Now what I do is, if I'm going to make my first breakdown, I will try to keep it as simple as I can, basically. So what I would need to do is take stuff out, right? So so I know that there are drums from the MPC. Let's take them out first. Bam, two. I'm going to switch to the next uh, sequence. Turn this off. And then we're going to go in and make a drop like so. So all the drums are off. It was not so hard, right? And the filter's playing. There's an arpeggio playing because this is the first time you're going to hear some music. Let's take out a little bit of this. Nice. So now we're going to build up some tension. The bass line was coming from a, 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 a sound that out of the Akai, that progressive bass line that we had, that was playing from here. Now, in the break and after the drop, it's cool to introduce your fancy schmancy synthesizer. So you, I'll save them up. So I'm, I'm multitasking them. I don't play everything with the mini tar. Um, and I think that it works as well. Now we open up the filter. Muscle memory, like I said, I know that on five is where my drum roll is. See, so I leave everything open. With function, I select what I'm going to arm once I think I'm going to give it another round. So I'm holding function here. Start with the drums a bit on the MPC. Open this up to Open it up, open it up, two, three, four, next sequence, and we go in. So, that's, you can hear. Nice. Cool. Now this is what I do, because now I'm like, oh my God. You know, you can debate like, don't you need more sequences to just like have this track go? Well, the intro can be the outro. And you will go back to the ostinato, sort of like vibe where everything goes on the same root note. Now this is music here, adrenaline, hands in the air, everybody having a good time. Playing around here with the arpeggio. Nice. Basic melodic techno stuff, right? Cool. Now a drop. And you can hear how I can easily add or take out some effects. So if I need to just like have it dry to be a little bit more aggressive, open the filter maybe a little bit more, but keep it like this. And if I think like, okay, it needs to be spaced out a little bit more. Okay, I'll go in. Open up the uh, black sky right here. Cool. Now the fun part is, I'll just love it. Kick is coming out of a separate apple, but it will still be affected by the uh, uh, by the high pass. 
And if I open this up now, all the drums are here. I can see that this is going one, two, one, two, one, two, three. So that crash always keeps going, right? Okay, now, cool. Now I need to just go back to my own sort of like uh, build down kind of vibe. So I'll go back to two. And we're back. Cool. So usually it takes longer for me to just like work this, obviously. Now I'm going to just transition into another into another tune. What I'll do, I'll probably go and play this already. So now it's going to bank B2 and it starts like different snare drum. So those two things have changed. Cool. I took out the kick, which I can do here or I can do here. Sometimes it's best to just like do it like this. Um, I know that there's something here playing already. This is my intro. No, 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 let's not get ahead of myself. Nice one. Kicks a bit on the soft side, so I'll go back. There you go. Bam. Okay. What we're going to do now is Drum roll it a little bit, not all the way to the max. Now we're gonna get more melody in here. And with the trick with is to do, I keep the filter on 12 o'clock. I can open it up, but I keep it fairly in the dark. So it's a bit suspicious, you know? It's, it's, it it um, invokes a bit of a suspense. Okay, same thing, we go for the break straight, yeah? Take this out, go here, and then there's a small vocal bit that plays. So all these things that I want to um, pick your brain with are coming out of the filter. So you build it up, you build it up nice and slow. Except for first pattern, where I was a bit inconsistent. Three is always going to be my drum roll. So if I open this up, I can... One, two, three, four, two, three, go. Next track, same thing. So you see how I land on this last um, pattern, and now we'll go back and think like, you know what? If I'm just want to take this out, well first you. So, just a slice of sample. It gives a bit of a feeling like, okay, I hear singing, but you can make out what it is what, you know? And then the arpeggio that was playing here, I took it out. So kick out, one, two, already armed this, go back here, one, two, three, and back out. So, and then you can opt to say, do I want to do this again? If it's a cool vibe, you can just go into that different vibe again. You know, drop that bass. But if not, you'll just t turn it down. And 
Hamptons, I got my fancy fancy synths. Obviously, I love to just like play around with them. So, here you go. This I can record as well if I wanted to. Recording it to the MPC but then it would mean that it's always going to do this same thing. Now, I kept it simple as I said, but I can easily take the sub uh, sequence 37 or the uh, Minilog XD with me. I've got like uh, enough room and there's room on the mixer as well. But for this, simple. You know, this can be any kind of mixer, um, but I've opted to go for this mixer right now. So let's see if we can make a transition again. Back, bank, three, pattern one. So it's already going, you can see it. Two, four, five, two, six, seven, eight, and out. Instead of a drum roll, I've got reverb on this pattern sitting right here because I would look right now, I'm maybe 20 minutes in, say, and now I would like to make a, a bigger impact. This track is going to be a little bit louder. So, here we go. One, two, three. Now, this sample is coming from the Octa track on track seven. So, muscle memory again. Track three, always going to be my drum roll or reverb. Track uh, seven is always going to be some sort of a sample and hold catalyst to just keep this groove going. So this is already, you know, going. Instead of thinking, whoa, I'm going to add stuff when I get to this point, I'm thinking, okay, take out the right symbol, which is on six, two, three, four, three, four, on five, and just build it out. Yeah, I'm liking it. But I really work my drums a lot, so I'm thinking like, okay, what can I get from the octave track, you know? How I really need to I treat this as a drum computer, basically. So all the samples that are cool, that are sounding well, those I'm going to use, obviously. And this sounds kick-ass on a loud sound system, believe me. It's really, really sounding well. So. Okay, break down, I'm going to move to the next one. Slowly, reverb, reverb, reverb. Oh, I've got a sound coming here, wait, let's go back, 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 back. See, that's what I mean. So, next level, I can just build this out as well. Build anticipation. Got an acid line that I have sampled of my uh, TBO3 that I didn't bring, but I sampled it. Um, so that's on this pattern. Also coming from the acid box three. Two, three, four, five. See, we're elevating stuff now. So the set is going, and no really big sort of drops or having people stand there for ages for something to happen. I love my music to really go and keep going. Once I'm going, I'm going, right? Cool, now what I'm going to do now is take out the drums, go to this pattern, lower this and lower this and play. So you can see I'm building up my attention. Okay, open up this more. Ah, the Tetra sounds absolutely yummy. Come on, man. Huh? Drums.
Open up this, come on. Two. Very euphoric, that's what I like. Okay, and now I've got some sort of a hop sequence playing here. Sound that I made with the um, subsequent 37. Got some about it here. 40, 40. So, I'll give myself options. I can either go back to the break that I just did, but let's wind it down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and. So you get the idea of how I work the setup, how I work the sound, how I'm actually migrating from one place to the next, right? Cool. Now, there's another track here that I can't play because I'm gonna get a copyright. Um, copyrighted by YouTube, so I'm going to switch to phase five, which means bank five one, and then this is the first one, and then one one one. So you hear how I keep migrating, keep moving. Now there's another sample that's playing here. That's a cool sample to build tension with. Well, I can see three, four. Check this out. Now it goes down. And this is just how basically how I build it up. And I tell you, the, the more you just keep this thing going, uh, the more people are gonna, gonna get clued on into what is happening, right? Okay. Take out number seven. Go to the break down here, take out the kick, Let's see what happens here. Not a musical break. So it's a concept, like I said. Uh, these records I can easily just like record and perform. Um, and it doesn't need to be uh, more difficult. I saw it uh, with Ento. I saw Ento do it. Um, uh, and I was like, pfft, I was very impressed with the way he set it up. Also, Kink has a similar workflow where um, they can just like, yeah. Improvise on the fly, that's the next thing that's going to be embedded on this set. I can, I can just like sample stuff into the uh, MPC. But first I wanted to have my music solidly enough that I can really work it. So this is what I'm doing. I'm looking at the half measure of the sample. Let's take out a snare. Um, this is the last one. Four, two, put seven on back again. So it starts. So I built all this music around it and the trick for me is to really start with this pattern if I'm making music, if I'm composing music, this will be my first pattern obviously and I'll just make all this nice music. Okay, now we're gonna go back. One, two, Uh, I think you get the idea of how it works. Check it out. Boom. So everything is modular in the sense, not talking modular synthesis, I'm talking about modular that's all these different jigsaw pieces fit together, you know? Drums coming from the Akai, from the Octatrack.
So this is just an 808 loop that I've got from the Behringer TD8. Um, and then I'll just sample the stuff in, right? And uh, funny detail, that kick drum you've been listening to has been the same kick drum all the time. I didn't change it. I find one that you that works, I'll stick it in that sweet spot frequency in the club and I'll just keep kicking your ass with it all the time because that's where I do think I can find my value, obviously. Okay, um, I guess that that is that, guys. Alex Ambrosiak and Captain Ziplock are the new patrons for this week. They are following the whole shenanigans on patreon.com slash analog kitchen. That's where I got my community that started there, but there is a, a more interactive sort of like bridge that is an application that Patreon supports heavily, which is Discord. And on Discord, we've got the whole community. We've got chats after this video, uh, which is cool. And the community is growing vastly, so thanks for supporting guys that's really really cool now this is my two cents this is how i work it if you have any ideas or if you're already like going and growing and you're doing your stuff please let me know in the comment section below don't be a stranger if you want to get closer patreon like i said is the place to get in touch um we're doing a dance carousel which is cool which means all the producers that are there uh, that feel inclined or um, feel um, confident confident enough make a eight bar uh, loop with some music over the top of the past there are drums onto the next producer so the next producer will just get those beats and put puts his music his or hers music on top and then makes their own beats 
migrate into the own beat and then again passes their beat on to the next producer. So I'm trying to see how long this dance carousel can be. We need more people, so climb on board, let's go do it. Now, um, there's some music on Bandcamp, that's uh, Bandcamp, analogkitchen.bandcamp.com, you need to just be um, straight with that. And uh, thank you for watching. If you made it this far into the video, you are an absolute superstar. Thank you for watching. I'm Analog Kitchen and I will catch you next week on another video. Analog Kitchen, out.